this fight is for everybody. Everybody has a role to play in this fight. Everybody who has a platform has a responsibility to fight for the very people who gave them those platforms right, and put them right, there. That's right. And so we stand here with Sean King, co-founder of Grassroots Law Project, someone who has risked his life so that he could bring justice to the many people who have been harmed and impacted by vigilantes, white supremacists, folks who have said things against our communities to hold them accountable and to stand with the many families. So he has a big platform, but Sean knows how to use it. That's and so right. we see his role in this movement. That's we see the work right. that he does. Yeah. Not everybody got to be with Sean King, right. but we understand the importance of his role in this movement. So That's we want right. to give it up to Sean, and we want to give him this platform. Right. Sean, Sean is our friend. <laughs> uh, hello, everybody. First and foremost, I wanted to say I'm not an outsider. I was I was born and raised in Kentucky. So um, I lived here for I lived here for 20 years. And this is my home. And I just want to make a very simple point. Uh, I was actually trained as a high school teacher. I, I bump into people who think uh, what I do is post on Instagram. Uh, but I was actually trained as a teacher. I taught high school history and civics. I taught for three years in Atlanta's jails and prisons full time. I just want to teach just for a moment. Louisville's system is not broken. There's a tendency for us to often think that what we're dealing with here in Louisville, what we're dealing with in Kentucky, and what these families are dealing with all over the country is a broken system. But when a system is broken, what that means is that that system was designed well was well-intentioned and has deviated from the way it was designed. That's not what we're dealing with. And so when you approach a system that's broken, you approach it with band-aids, with tinkers, with, li with little adjustments. What we're dealing with is not a broken system. We're dealing with a system that was designed to function this way. And so often, what we fight for are adjustments and repairs. Well, that's what you do to a broken system. You adjust it and you repair it. But this system that we're fighting against was designed to oppress us. It's not, it's not broken. It's functioning exactly the way it was imagined, created, the way it was funded to work. And so often what we experience is that in spite of all of our good efforts, the little adjustments, you can slap a body camera on it, and they'll still do it. You can have a cell phone, which is what we just saw, and it continues. It's because the system is actually functioning the way they intended to function. So yes, we're here to call for justice for all of these families who've experienced it. But what we're actually calling for is a complete dismantling of this system. When we, call for, when we call for defunding, what we're saying is that this nation shows its priorities every single day. So when a city like Louisville, when a county like Jefferson County, or a state like Kentucky says, well, we care about children. Well, we're saying, show us that in the budget. When people, when people say Black Lives Matter, well, we want to see how Black Lives Matter in your budget. Show us how Black Lives Matter in your policies. And what we understand is that the policies, the budgets, don't match the rhetoric. So we are here to dismantle these systems from the, from the bottom up. And as we stand with these families, we're also calling here in, from here in Louisville and here all over the, the state of Kentucky, we're calling for a complete reimagination. I'll close with this, of what public safety means. Right. Listen, if you go to the safest communities in Louisville, if you go to the safest communities in Kentucky, you can hardly find a police officer in those communities. Imagine in your mind the safest neighborhoods in this city. There are no police there. Let me tell you why those communities are safe. They're safe because everybody's employed. Everybody is well housed. Everybody has access to quality health care. Mental health is actually given treatment. Substance abuse is given treatment. And let, and let me really make it personal. They don't even execute no-knock warrants in those communities. Every single study for 40 years 
shows that black folk and white folk use drugs at the same rate. Every study shows that rich white folk and poor black folk use drugs at the same rate. But these no-knock warrants and the way they police our communities, they don't do that there. They receive treatment. They use health care. They have intervention. And so they define for themselves safety to be one thing, which is access to resources, which is access to quality schools and health care, but define for us something totally different. And what we're saying is we want the safety that that Louisville's safest communities have. We want the safety that America's 10 safest neighborhoods have, but it's not police. That's the safety we want. And that's what we're calling for. And we are so immensely proud that these families are able to push through their pain, to hop on planes, to put themselves in harm's way during a pandemic, to still not just fight for their own case, but to show each other support and love. And uh, lastly, uh, I am so grateful for the Until Freedom organization. They are filling a need all over the country by loving on families and loving on communities in practical ways. We saw yesterday, Louisville felt the love and it was a, it was a beautiful thing. So thank you all for having me. Let's keep fighting for justice. All right.